So here we have the same simple system of a bar attached to a spring K on the left and to a damper C on the right. And exactly at the mid bay of the beam is its center of rotations where the beam can rotate with angle say theta. We denote that the damper to have displacement x1 and the spring to have displacement x2. The beam is assumed as a uniform beam with mass m and second mass moment of inertia j. Okay, so let's determine the energy of this system one by one. The first one is the kinetic energy which relates to the mass and inertia of the system. So the kinetic energy or T is half of the mass multiplied by xc dot square plus a half second mass moment of inertia j multiplied by theta dot square. Remember the concept, the translational kinetic energy always relates to the velocity of the center of gravity. And because this is a uniform bar, where its center of gravity is at the middle of the bar. So we have here there is no displacement of center of gravity. So xc equals to zero. So we can eliminate this term. And we leave it only the kinetic energy from the rotational motion. Okay, the second step we can go to the spring where it stores the potential energy. We know that the spring has displacement x2. So we can write down straightforward the potential energy, which is u equals to half k multiplied by x2 square. The viscous damper has work done on the system, where the work done is w equals to minus integral damping constant of the damper multiplied by its velocity x1 dot dx1. All right, so these are all energies from the system. Let's summarize this again. We have the kinetic energy from the mass and second mass moment of inertia. We have the potential energy from the spring. Potential energy. And also we have the work done by the damper. Now, because we want to derive the equation of motion, there must be one reference or generalized coordinate we have to choose. So let's say we choose the angular displacement of the bar as the generalized coordinate. The kinetic energy is already in theta, so this is fine. We don't have to do anything with the kinetic energy. But the potential energy here is as the functions of x2, and the work done is as the functions of x1. So what we have to do next is to find the relations between x1 and x2 with theta. Let's do this first for x1. The length of rotation is L over 2. So when the bar rotates by theta clockwise, the spring is suppressed by x1. Remember the concept of linearizations where if theta is sufficiently small, we can draw the triangle diagram, which indicates that x1 can be treated as a linear displacement. So we can write down x1 as L over 2 multiplied by theta. Now x2 has also the same condition with x1, where the length of rotation is also L over 2. So let's draw theta here. And we can also draw the triangle diagram to help us to visualize the math. So x2 is L over 2 multiplied by theta. Okay, so basically it is done. So what's left is we have to substitute x1 and x2 in terms of theta back to the energy equations. The work done has been expressed in terms of coordinate theta. Therefore, the terms that we have here is the rotational damping constant equivalent. The 
same thing for the potential energy now in terms of theta so then what we have here is the rotational stiffness constant equivalent back to the kinetic energy the second mass moment of inertia equivalent is j therefore the equation of motion is simply j equivalent theta double dot plus c equivalent theta dot plus k equivalent theta equals to zero and the kinetic energy of the system is the square root of k equivalent divided by j equivalent okay guys that is how to derive equation of motion using system equivalent analysis or energy method you can practice yourself using different generalized coordinates x1 or x2 and you should end up having the same natural frequency as here.